Hi guys, and welcome to the last book haul of May. So I filmed a book haul earlier, so this will be part two because I've had more stuff come in. Um, so yeah, <laughs> some stuff I wasn't quite expecting to arrive yet. So let's go ahead and get into this. Um, some of these I can't tell you much about, but I'll do what I can. So moving forward, um, I, I, I need to save money for a camera <laughs> and a new computer. So my book buying is going to slow, which is good. And I really should focus on building up my savings. So I have, I get the email from Amazon for when Kindle books are, are free. So I'll still continue to do that. I'll continue to go and utilize my library. So I'll, I'll do two types of library hauls. If I get anything from the library book sale, I will include those in a haul um, and whatever I check out. If there's like one or two books, then I'll include that in just a, a generalized library haul. So that's my plan. Um, and then on occasion, there might be an additional haul, as, but that's going to depend on how many books in a series that I read. For example, I have, like right now I'm reading... So right now I'm reading Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. This is the first book in a series. If I did not, now I do own the whole series because um, it came as a boxed set. But if I did not own the whole series after I read this one and thought I want to continue and continue with owning my own series because I've enjoyed it so well, then I would order the second one. But I would not order the third one until I've read the second one. Um, and the other ones that I'll be ordering will be, I'm trying to collect the Fear Street books by R.L. Stein. I have three books left in the original Fear Street series to collect. Right now they're around $30 or more, so I'm watching for those to go on to a better price. And then after that, there's like the Fear Street Super Chillers, and, and this, so there's other books by R.L. Stein that I'll want to collect. But I don't want to start collecting the other in the Fear Street saga world until I've completed the original series. So I've got three more of those to get. And then I would like to own, with Autism Reads, is a readathon that I host where the goal is to read books with Autism Rep. I think I'm going to change it up next year where the books don't necessarily need Autism Rep, but they will be by autistic authors. So I'm going to make that more of a priority. If they have Autism Rep, even better. If not, that's fine as long as the author is autistic. Uh, so that's going to be my focus for the 2024 year. I'm also going to try to be more aware of, instead of putting middle grade and middle grade and middle grade or young adult, I want to kind of spread it out more. So one month do middle grade and then like uh, like middle grade and then young adult and then adult. And then middle grade, young adult, adult. So kind of like one of each age range per season is what I'm thinking. And we'll just kind of maybe go, I'm thinking going youngest to eldest. So that's my thoughts on that. So, and I want to own all the books that I use within that readathon um, so that I can write and take notes. And I'm thinking about in 2024, and let me know your thoughts, especially if you participate in the Autism Reads. The Discord will always be linked in the description box. I know a few times I've forgotten, but for the most part, it will always be linked. The Discord will always be linked in the description box. Let me know if you would be interested in live shows at the end, like at the... Let me know if you would be interested in a live show. So like the book for January, we would have the live show at the start of February. And the February's book at the start of March, etc, etc. So let me know if that's something that you would be interested in. I can tell you my thoughts on the autism rep, if there is any, on the writing style, just things like that. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about getting... I have several notebooks. I just have to pull out a notebook and writing down in a book because this is something that I would appreciate too with going into books sometimes and I know other people would appreciate this. I, now I'm not guaranteeing but I would like to is to write how many times the F word pops up or shit or damn or hell or uh, if it has occult vibes or satanic stuff or if it's Christian, if it's like a generalized Christian or if there's a specific religion, if it's talks about Judaism or Catholicism or Hinduism or whatever it is. Where does it take place? Facts about the book. Um, and what type of representation? What type of LGBT? What type of gender representation? What type of, um, you know, male, female, what, who the characters are? 
and racial representation could just kind of list the facts. I would love to do that. I don't know if that's feasible, but I would love to be able to do that and just list the facts on a review on Goodreads. So, and all my social media is linked in the description box as well. Social, uh, Goodreads, Twitter, even though I'm not very active on Twitter. Um, and because Twitter is like a lot of drama. So I tend to avoid Twitter. I'll post occasionally, very rarely, but I do have it just in case. I use it mostly to follow for readathons and what they're when they're going to post their announcements and stuff. That's mostly what I use it for. Um, and then Instagram. So I'm most active on Instagram. Goodreads would come in second because I just go in and sometimes I don't review the book. I just rate it. And then very rarely on Instagram. Those are my only. I have no interest in TikTok. I have a Facebook, but I use my Facebook mostly to follow family so and see what my dad's side of the family my paternal side of the family is up to because they're mostly on Facebook so I so I don't post my Facebook because it's just again following for family so that's pretty much it for now um okay so let's go ahead and get into this haul so I think the hauls moving forward they'll be more again it's not going to be everything in one big haul. It'll be library, like checkout haul, a library sale haul, or they'll be combined, and then a generalized haul. Um, the other thing that's going to reduce the amount of books coming in is I've canceled my book subscription services because my priority right now is to save money for a better camera. The battery on this camera does not last nearly as long, so I want to save money for a camera. Um, and then also save money for a new computer and then I'm actually thinking about getting a service dog but those are very expensive and then the training and everything so I have things I want to save for so a book subscription service is just on the back burner I might save every you know twenty dollars a check or a month um, and then when I have like enough money to gift myself a subscription for like three months or six months then I will do it that way but I have to save for it and so it'll just be kind of very sporadically for when something like that shows up perfectly fine uh, okay let's go ahead and get into this I've rambled long enough okay this first three books I'm going to show you are part of a series now I have I do have a video I don't remember how old it was that I mentioned this particular author I am leery of because she does write sexually explicit stuff but I'm starting to enjoy that <sighs> And so I want to give this author a second chance. So I have the Wicked Trilogy by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Uh, so we have book number one, which is Wicked. Book number two is Torn. And this is like a fantasy romance. I have read the first one and I actually really liked it. I haven't read it in a while. And then I have Brave, which is the final book in this series. So I will not be telling you what books number two and three are about, but I will go ahead and read the synopsis. It's been over a year since I've read this, so I don't remember what it's really about other than it being a fantasy romance, and there's something special about this girl, like a half-breed type situation. That's not the best terminology, and I don't really like that, but that's the only word that's coming to my mind right now. Mixed species. <laughs> so... Okay, things are about to get wicked in New Orleans. 22-year-old Ivy Morgan isn't your average college student. She, and others like her, know humans aren't the only thing toiling, or trolling the French Quarter for fun and, uh, and for food. Her duty to the order is her life. After all, four years ago, she lost everything at the hands of the creatures she'd sworn to hunt. Tearing her world and her heart apart, uh, and her heart apart. Full stop. Okay. Red Owens is the last person Ivy expected to enter her rigidly controlled life. He's six feet and three inches of temptation and swoon-inducing charm. With forest green eyes and a smile that surely left a stream of broken hearts in its wake, he has the uncanny, almost unnatural ability to make her yearn for everything he has to offer. But telling him in hit... Telling... Hit, oh, but letting him in is as dangerous as the boy she loved once before wait but letting him in is as dangerous as hunting the cold-blooded killer stalking the streets losing the boy she loved once before had nearly destroyed her but the sparking tension that grows between them becomes impossible for ivy to deny 
deep down she wants. She needs more than what her duty demands her and what her past has shaped for her. But as Ivy grows closer to Ren, she realizes she's not the only one carrying secrets that could shatter the trail, uh, uh, the frail bond between them. There's something he's not telling her, and one thing is for certain. She's no longer sure what is more dangerous to her, the ancient beings threatening to take over the town or the man demanding to lay claim to... Uh, claim to her heart and her soul. Now here's my issue. It's the type of font and the white on the the faint white on the gr background gradient. It's difficult to read and mostly it's the type of font and the size of the font but yet the font in here is just fine. I can see that just fine. This is difficult. <laughs> so anyway so I have the Wicked Trilogy. Okay. Moving on, we have, uh, or I have, the next three months worth of books for the Autism Reads Discord. So for June, it is Colin Fisher by Ashley Edward uh, Miller and Zach Stentz. I could not find my copy, and I know I have a copy. I have looked everywhere. I don't know where my copy went, so I ordered it. This was not supposed to get here until June 5th. Surprise, this arrived today. If I find my other copy, my mom has mentioned she is interested in reading this, so if I find my other copy, she'll get one of these and can read it at some point. So, I do know um, this has autism rep, I, and with the research that I've just recently done on this, neither of these authors are autistic, or one might be, but it's never been tested, or he has like an adopted child or something that is. So. It's something along those lines. I'm pretty sure neither of them are. At least one of them definitely is not. So I do know, please be aware of this one. I do know this involves a school shooting. Okay, be aware of that. I completely understand if you need to pass June up. So please be aware of that. It says, Colin Fisher doesn't like to be touched or the color blue. He avoids eye contact unless absolutely necessary. Sherlock Holmes has a place of honor on his wall. His room is a shrine to clear-headed logic. When a phone rings loudly in class, Colin can't cope, so he barks like a dog. But when a gun goes off in the school cafeteria, he isn't scared. He's curious. Colin Fisher is determined to discover who fired that gun. So that's all I know. And there's a couple of things that I'm reading on this that I kind of go, I don't know if how this representation is really going to be. Um, I do know there, it does seem like there's special interest. I don't know about, and I guess, you know, maybe there are some people that are on the spectrum out there that when there's a loud sound, they bark or do some other sound as a way to cope. I, I don't know. I haven't heard of that, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So we'll see how I feel and how things are handled, but there's that. So school shooting involved in that one. Okay. And then I don't remember the order. I do not remember which one is for July and which one is for August. So I'm just going about these in any order. The next up, and I think Colin Fisher is YA. This one I think is either YA or middle grade. So I, I've had quite a bit of young reads. I would like to incorporate more adult. So this one is called Anything But Typical by Nora Raleigh uh, Baskin. And this is the Schneider Family Book Award. Oh, well, that's cool. The book award has uh, Braille on it right there. It says, Jason Blake is an autistic 12-year-old living in a neurotypical world. Most days, it's just a matter of time before something goes wrong. But Jason finds a glimmer of understanding when he comes across Phoenix Bird, who posts stories to the same online site as he does. Jason can be himself when he writes, and he thinks that Phoenix Bird, her name is Rebecca, uh, could be his first real friend. As desperate as Jason is to meet her, he's terrified that if they do meet, Rebecca will only see his autism and not who Jason really is. And then it's like this award-winning author, so... Yeah, so anything but typical. And then the next book is called Ginny Moon by Benjamin Ludwig, as I'm guessing how it's pronouncing, because I... Every time I see this, I think of like Ludwig van Beethoven. So I always say Ludwig when I see that. Might not be the right pronunciation in this particular case, but that's what I'm going with. So Ginny Moon by Benjamin Ludwig. This one says it has a little flap here. It says Ginny Moon is exceptional. Everyone knows it. Her friends at school. 
teammates on the basketball team, and especially her new adoptive parents. Okay, so adoption's gonna be in this. That's pretty cool. They all love her, even if they don't quite understand her. They want her to feel like she belongs. But what they don't what they don't know is that Jenny Moon has no intention of belonging. She's found her birth mother on Facebook and is determined to return to her, even if it means going back to a place that was extremely dangerous. Interesting. Because Jenny left something behind, and she's desperate to get it back to make things right. But no one listens, no one understands, so Jenny takes matters into her own hands. So... Um, let's see. Lifelong teacher of English and writing, Benjamin Ludwig lives in New Hampshire with his family. He holds an MAT in English education and an MFA in writing. Shortly after he and his wife married, they became... Okay, this is the one where they adopted a kid that has autism. So he does not have autism, um, but he has a son that does. It says, shortly after he and his wife married, they became foster parents and adopted a teenager with autism. Jenny Moon is his first novel, which was inspired in part by his conversations with other parents at Special Olympics basketball practices. So, that'll be interesting to see how he handles it, um, and we'll just go from there. Okay, moving on, I have, okay, I, I'm trying to do these in like, kind of a particular, I, I mean, there's really no particular order to do things. Let's go with... These are all good series continuations. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna do that, we'll do that. Okay, I have two Fair Street books. I was able to get two. So, um, Cat by Arl Stein finally went on sale and I was able to get it at a good price at Thrift Books. So that's what I have. For the longest time, this was like well over 75. At one time it was over 100 bucks finally went down to like 20 bucks. I thought, I don't think it's going to go any cheaper with the way <laughs> the pricing was before. So I went ahead and did it. I still would have preferred like less than that because it's a mass market novella, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, oh, there's a page folded down here. Let me just correct that. Okay. Cat. The cat came back. Marty never liked the cat. It always got in the way at basketball practice, but he never meant to kill it. Now, Marty thinks he's going crazy. He sees cats wherever he goes. Oh, you're being hunted by cats. I have not read this. <laughs> I've always wanted to just because it's cat and there's a cat. Okay, uh, let's see. He has nightmares about them. He knows they want revenge. Too bad Marty doesn't have nine lives because his first one is almost over. So that is Cat by Arl Stein. Okay. The next Arl Stein book I have, I will not be reading the synopsis for but this one is called Fear Hall, The Conclusion. So this is one where this is part of a duology within the Fear Street world, within the original Fear Street series. So the first one is called Fear Hall, The Beginning, and this is the conclusion. So obviously you'll read the beginning before this one. Fear Hall, this is still a young adult, but these kids are in a university or a college in a dorm. Things start happening and someone tries to look into it and it just goes from there. So... Uh, yeah, I look forward to going back. I have read this series, um, the Fear Hall series, and loved it. And so we'll see if it holds up, if I still like it. Okay, next up, I read, for the, in the month of May, I read two Jinjun Ito books. So I really wanted to get another Jinjun Ito. I still have, like, two others sitting in my TBR, but, yeah, I couldn't wait. So this one is called Deserter. And Jinjun Ito does the horror manga. Love it. Uh, let's see. It says, A vengeful family hides an army deserter for eight years after the end of World War II, cocooning him in a false reality where the war never ended. A pair of girls look alike, but they're not twins, and, the boys night and a boy's nightmare threatens to spill out into the real world. This hauntingly strange story collection showcases a dozen of Jinjun Ito's earliest works from when he burst into the horror scene, showing fresh, sowing fresh seeds of terror. So this is a collection of short stories. I've absolutely loved Jinjun Ito's work, and so I'm looking forward to picking that one up. Okay, next up, from what I could see on Goodreads, this one was supposed to be a trilogy, but there's only two books out. There's no cover for the third book, so I don't know if that one was canceled or whatever the case is. 
this first book I actually read from the library and I actually decided to get my own copy of it because I absolutely loved it and I keep thinking about it. And I thought if I keep thinking about it and I loved the writing, I want my own copy. And so when I got this one, I went ahead and ordered the second book in this series. So I'm going to look at the cover of the second one at the synopsis and see if maybe it follows different characters, if I can read it, if it just takes place maybe in the same world. But the first one is called The Duke Undone by Joanna Lowell. I absolutely loved this book. So for those of you who don't know what this is about, it says, an artist stumbles upon a naked duke and an unlikely love story begins in this captivating Victorian historical romance. There is spice, okay? Be aware of that. When Royal Academy painting student Lucy Coover trips over a naked man passed out in a London alley, she does the decent thing. She covers him up and fetches help. Trouble is, she can't banish his muscular form from her dreams as easily. Compelled to capture every detail, she creates a stunning portrait but is forced to sell it when the rent comes due. What could be worse than surrendering the, surrendering the very picture of your desire? Meeting the man himself. Anthony Philby, Duke of Weston, is nobody's muse. Upon discovering this scandalous likeness, he springs into action. His infamous family has been torn apart by shame and secrets, and he can't afford more gossip. Even a whisper may jeopardize his inheritance and his chance at independence. His plan is simple. Burn the painting, confront the artist. Or rather, it's simple until he meets Lucy and decides to offer the bewitching young artist a devil's bargain. And it does not, the simplicity vanishes when he realizes that the artist is a woman. He thinks it's a man. He'll help save her foreclosed home if she'll help repair his family's brutal legacy. Loved that book. Okay. The second one, I love the cover of these books. I mean, I love this cover. The, the flowers in the background, the silhouettes, love this. And this book is just as gorgeous to me. And this is called The Runaway Duchess, again, also by Joanna Lull. I mean, look how stunning and beautiful that cover is. So, this one has Lucy and Philby. Okay, different. I will read the synopsis because these are different characters. So it's going to be a completely different synopsis. It says, Pretty and pampered, Lavinia Yardley always dreamed of becoming a duchess, but family disgrace forces her into marriage with the most vile Duke of England, and she finds herself desperate for a way out. When a rustic stranger mistakes her for globe-trotting botanist Muriel Pendrake at a train station, Lavinia has a split second to decide whether to submit to her fate or steal someone's, someone else's. Neil Terrymane spent his youth traveling the world as Varnum Nurisis' most daring plant hunter. Now he runs the business and is ready to settle down with a like-minded wife who'll fit right in with his large, happy, down-to-earth family. His correspondence with Muriel Pendrake proved they'd be the perfect match. Odd that the woman in the flesh seems more like a society belle than a scientist. As they tramp the Cornish moors together, Lavinia and Neil discover a wild and rare desire. But this blossoming love is rooted in lies. And when the real Muriel Pendrake shows up, they can't hide from who they are. The truth may wither their hopes of happiness. Let's see. Or it may bloom into the sweetest love of all. So, different characters, different plot line. Maybe the characters in the first one will pop up or make an appearance in the second. Who knows? But that's where it's at so far. Okay, the last several books are all series continuations. Okay, these are all series continuations. So I read... Can You See Me by Libby Scott and Rebecca Westcott. Absolutely loved that one. Found out, knew it was part of a series. I knew there was a book number two, but there's actually a prequel. So rather than buying book number two, I got the prequel, and it's called Ways to Be Me. Same authors, Libby Westcott and Rebecca Westcott. Libby, or Libby Scott and Rebecca Westcott. Libby is the one that is autistic, and I think she's a minor. I don't know how old she is, or at least when the books were being written. I don't know how old she is now. So, um, okay, this one says, and let's see, 10 year old Tally had high hopes for year six. Being in, uh, in the top class at school means there is a lot to look forward to. The most important thing, uh, 
being the school production. Tally is convinced she'll win the lead role, but at home, things aren't going so well. Mum and Dad have been making Tally feel pressured and upset, and Tally wishes things didn't bother her so much, but they do. And sometimes she feels so misunderstood and frustrated she could explode. Then Tally's mum and dad tell her about something she's never heard about before, something called autism, and everything changes. So book one in the series, Can You See Me? She already has her diagnosis, and she talks about how she's feeling, the pros and cons of certain situations, or symptoms that she has with the autism, like the anxiety, and being able to have better hearing, and her issues with food. So she talks about pros and cons about things like that. So this is, sounds like it's going to be before her diagnosis and then learning about it and kind of accepting who she is uh, with the autism. So I think this is going to be pretty good. So I look forward to being back with these characters. So, okay. Now these next ones, I really cannot, I, I'm just not going to read the synopsis for. So I'll try to give you a very brief description. <laughs> so this next one I have is the third book in a series and that is a manga called Children of the Whales written by Abby Umida. Uh, so third one in a series, this is a fantasy. You have people that are considered elders because they live long and they are unmarked. Those that are marked tend to be children and those pretty young in life um, and they do not live as long but they have these magical abilities. I'm still trying to figure that out um, and things like that. They live on this island that's pretty much built of sand and it sits on a sea of sand and it acts like the sand, the sea of sand acts like the sea. People get buried at sea or the sea of sand. See, it's a little confusing, <laughs> but I will say I liked the second book much more than the first book. So I'm definitely intrigued to continue on um, to see where this one falls in line between the first and the second as far as liking it. So right now they're trying to save the island and the people on the island and that's pretty much all i can say without spoiling anything so okay moving on um <laughs> i have the complete collection number two of orange by ichigo takano i read the first one this month and fell in love gave it five stars this one what has happened is these groups of like hi these groups of like 16, 17 year olds, uh, this, or the, anyway, they're in school. You're following the 16 or 17 year olds. Sometimes there's a flash to where it's like 10 years later. Um, at one point, the main character that you're following, I'm blanking on her name, but she, and these are the kids, this girl here gets a letter from her future self so her 20s she's like 17 she gets a letter from her 27 year old self saying you need to do everything you can to save this guy's life suicide is mentioned quite a bit in the first collection and so in the first several books um so please be aware of that but i absolutely loved it it was very sweet very tender it made me giggle and kind of made me cry a little bit get a little misty eyed and teary so yeah, fell in love with this and I look forward to getting to this one. I did see there's supposed to be a third one, but the complete third collection would be told from this tall boy's perspective instead of her perspective. So it would be the same story, just a different perspective if that does come out. But I did see there was talk of that. Okay, moving on, I have another third book in a series and that is Tokyo Ghoul. Same situation with this one. I liked the second book much more than the first one. This one, we're following pretty much, they're pretty much like zombies, except they blend in with humans. You can't tell that they're zombies unless you see them eating someone. And there's this one guy, the main character that we're following throughout the, from the first book is pretty much half mortal, half zombie. And so he's trying to learn and adjust to being half zombie because the things that he liked as a human, like certain foods and stuff, he can't stand anymore. So we're just following him as he does that, there are these people that go around that once they know that someone is a zombie, they want to kill them. And things like that. And I'm not going to say anymore because then it's spoilers. Okay, next up. Now, next up I have the final book in a series or in a collection. I don't know if there will be any more. 
it might say so when I get to the end of this book, but I don't know. I would love to have more of these. And that's part of the Sarah, Scri Sarah Scribbles collection. This one is number four. This is Oddball. And this is just a collection of comics. There's no plot. It's just a collection of comics that poke fun at life. Try to lighten things up a little bit. Um, there's a cat. There's a rabbit. Um, aging millennial humor. What else do we have in here? What it's like to have anxious friends. Um, witch with a white cat. Um, common women's interests and suddenly finding a new obsession. So it's just poking fun at things that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day life. Um, browsing the internet, differing love languages, having friends and things like that. Um, there is, in this particular book, there is a page of stickers at the end. So that's pretty cool. I love this. I Sarah Anderson is becoming a, an autobuy author for me, and I have loved this, and I hope she comes out with more of the Sarah Scribbles collection. Absolutely would love more. Okay, this next book is the second book in a manga series, and I absolutely loved the first book. I, I don't know, I just, it was just awesome. I loved it. Um, so this particular one is called Black Butler by Yana Toboso, but this one's number two. So I read the first one, five stars, loved it. So this guy is kind of like black belt. Is able to catch a bullet. Is able to notice when someone's falling and be able to catch the cake before it f and have it still be in pristine, perfect condition on the plate before it smashes on the ground. So he's got stealthy black belt-esque Secret Service type abilities and he protects this 12 year old who's like part of this family that has a major toy tycoon business so yeah loved absolutely loved and I look forward to continuing this I just as soon as before I even finished the first book I'm like I've I'm hooked I need the second one so that's what I did okay now these in the last two books I did not buy. These are ones that I actually won from Goodreads and both of these are advanced readers copies or ARCs. So let's go ahead and tell you about these ones. This first one I have is called Yours for the Taking by Gabrielle Korn. This one comes out December of 2023. So December of this year. So Yours for the Taking. And this one says, let's see. A thrilling queer debut novel set several decades in the future and following an unforgettable cast of characters as they become swept up into a strange and exclusive new society. The year is 2050. Ava and her girlfriend live in what's left of Brooklyn. And though they love each other, if they're just, okay, and though they love each other, it's hard to find happiness while the effects of climate change rapidly e eclipse their world. Soon it won't be safe outside at all. The only people guaranteed survival are the ones whose applications are accepted to The Inside Project, a series of weather-safe city-sized structures around the world. The director of The Inside uh, being built on the bones of Manhattan is Jacqueline uh, Millinder, a reclusive billionaire women's rights advocate. Her ideas are unorthodox yet alluring, challenging the very concept of empowerment. Shelby, a business major from a working class family, is drawn to Jacqueline's promises of power and impact. When she lands a job as Jacqueline's personal assistant, she's swept, into, swept up into the glamorous world of corporatized feminism. Also drawn into Jacqueline's orbit is Olympia, who Jacqueline recruits, recruits to run the health department inside. The more Olympia learns about the project, though, the more she realizes there's something else at play. Probably something not so good. That generally tends to be the case. As Ava, Olympia, and Shelby start to notice the cracks in the system, there we go, uh, Jacqueline tightens her grip, becoming increasing, increasingly dangerous in what she is willing to do and who she is willing to sacrifice to keep her dream alive. So, yours for the taking. Um, again, by Gabriel Korn, and this one comes out in December of this year. I just know that it's December. It doesn't give me an actual date, but December. Okay. The last book I have in this particular haul is 
another ARC, and this is My Magnolia Summer by Victoria Benton Frank. I like the cover of this one. This one is set to come out in June, so next month. Got a plane. Hang on. They fly low <laughs> in this area. Okay, so My Magnolia Summer, again, this one comes out next month, so it comes out in June. And this one says, In New York City, winter never seems to loosen its hold, and to South Carolina transplant Maggie, born Magnolia after the fairest summer flower, the balmy beach weather of April back home in Sullivan's Island feels like a distant memory, until a phone call from her sister, Violet, changes everything. Gran, the treasured matriarch, has fallen into a coma after a car accident caused by Maggie's troubled mother, Lily. So they're named after flowers. Okay. But when Maggie returns, she finds there are other problems in her hometown. The Magic Lantern, the restaurant owned and run by generations of women in her family, is now rudderless, and her sister seems to be headed for a savage breakup. Once she is back among the marsh grasses and dunes of South Carolina, Maggie feels herself changing like the Atlantic tides. Rediscovering the roots she left behind and becoming a new and different version of herself, one who can see how minor a crash into the back of a very handsome farmer's truck may become fortuitous, perhaps even fate. When the three generations of South Carolina women join forces, the family pillar, Gran, Troubled Lily, Impulsive Violet, and Redoubtable, yeah, it says Redoubtable, Redoubtable Maggie, anything is possible. So, My Magnolia Summer. So that'll be interesting. Family drama. Okay, so that's it. So two arcs, and most of these are continuations of series. Continuations of series is going to be the biggest thing moving forward for now. Um, I am planning on every so often going to a bookstore, but only when I have enough cash to really go and kind of just have a little shopping spree. Um, so those will be a little bit more less frequent. So like something like that, um, I like to get my nails done. It's the one thing that I do that I feel any remote of prettiness for. So I withdraw money so that out of each check, to cover if I want a design or a design that's more intricate. Obviously it's going to cost more than more of a simple design. Um, and then I'll just save up whatever cash is left from that. So that'll take a couple of months. So when I have like 100 150 bucks saved up from all of that, then go book shopping. Pro most likely Barnes & Noble because that's the closest one. But if I can go to an independent bookstore, great. Um, also if I know when I'm going to go to Colorado again, I obviously want to have enough cash to buy whatever books I want in Maria's Bookshop, which is an independent bookstore in Colorado. So, in Durango, Colorado, on Main Street. So, that's my plan moving forward with hauls. So they're going to be a little bit different, but they're still, they're, they're not going away. They will still be here. I love books too much. Books are a special interest to me. I love them. I love how they smell. I love how they feel. For the most part, I hate like on Ginny Moon. It has deckled edges. Those I hate. Absolutely hate that. I like them to be clean and crisp. But... I just love books. Definitely a special interest. So that's it. Let me know if you've read any of these books. Um, again, like the ones for the Autism Reads, that Discord will be linked in the description box if you would like to join us for any of these books. And yeah, that's all I can think of. So talk to me in the comment section below. And until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.